day three at Euronaval 2022. We start today's video report discussing naval aviation with General Atomics, and then we will look at some of the new systems on display on the show floor. I am with Rolf Zissing, Vice President of Maritime Programs to discuss the EMOS program here in, in France. Uh, so Rolf, please tell us what's the, the status of the, the program uh, here in France. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, the status is, uh, of course, the French are moving along with the uh, Tepang program. And uh, in the meantime, we've been supporting uh, the risk reduction activities uh, to support the uh, technology selection as well as the uh, final design uh, configuration of the ship. Of course, one of the big questions people are asking is two versus three emuls. Uh, so that's something that we've been supporting. It's a question that the uh, obviously the French Navy has to answer, and, and we're here to support whatever that decision is. So we're also uh, actively engaged with French industry. Um, we were here several months ago, and we were here last week looking at uh, the uh, French sources uh, for possible partnerships on this program. Uh, we're in the very early phases of that, but it's important that we uh, get around to the companies and understand what the capabilities are so that we can make decisions about where best to involve the French industry in this program. What about uh, the program in the U.S.? Uh, is, is it moving forward uh, nicely? Yes, the, the program is uh, keeping us very busy. Uh, the Ford is actually steaming right now in the Atlantic. Uh, I've heard rumors that uh, she may actually be off the coast of France in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're very excited about the progress that that ship has been making in the uh, construction front. The CVN-79 John F. Kennedy uh, is making great progress and the systems are coming to life and we're looking forward to getting that ship uh, out to sea uh, in the future. Uh, so there's a lot of activities going on supporting the operating ship, the uh, construction activities, and of course now as the, the one ship is turning into multiple ships in the fleet, uh, we're looking at the long-term sustainment uh, activities that need to be put in place now, uh, depot activities, spare parts. Um, so it's, it's a very, very busy time for us, uh, but we like that. General Atomics is also showcasing their MQ-9B Sea Guardian uh, Maritime UAS and uh, I believe they're pitching it uh, for future French Navy programs and uh, we're going to try to find out more. So the Sea Guardian is uh, General Atomics' uh, most advanced product that's ready for the market right now. We're hearing from many customers around the world is they're not looking for a development program, they're looking for an airplane that is off the shelf and ready as we speak. So we've got uh, several customers of the uh, MQ-9B. Uh, the UK was our launch customer. Uh, Belgium uh, is the second customer. Uh, we've just recently added uh, Taiwan uh, to the mix. Uh, and we had our first operational flight for the Japanese Coast Guard just yesterday on the MQ-9B. So uh, in France, we have a, there's a program uh, called uh, AFCIMAR Phase 2, I believe. Right. Uh, would uh, the Sea Guardian be a good fit for that program? Uh, we believe Sea Guardian would be an excellent fit for that uh, program. Not only is it ready right now, but the capabilities it brings as a maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft, especially an unmanned aerial uh, system, are unprecedented. From the radar systems, from the SIGINT systems, from the electro-optical systems, and its ability to operate all of these sensors simultaneously, it provides uh, a previously unheralded amount of maritime intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, and it's also a multi-domain aircraft. So not only is it going to tell you what's on the surface of the water, but its ability to do anti-submarine warfare and deploy monitor and control sauna buoys, you can now see what's happening under the surface of the water. And the other domain is a very proven aircraft to fly both over land. So it's a very versatile, very flexible airplane that can really meet all the needs uh, for the French Navy. And uh, last but not least, how open are you to integrate uh, French payloads on, on board the airframe? So that's one of the leading discussions we've been having. Uh, the airplane, it's very easy to integrate uh, on this airplane. It's very much an open architecture. So we can put uh, French radars, uh, French Eland systems on the airplane uh, very quickly and very easily as desired by uh, the French Navy. Uh, one last uh, question, Bob. Uh, looking to the future, you unveiled this year the uh, MQ-9 stall, short takeoff and, and landing. 
have you looked if uh, this uh, system is uh, compatible with the, the French Navy LHDs? Yeah, we're, and we're very excited by this. This is going to be um, a, almost a plug and play system. We've, you take the same MQ-9B uh, fuselage and landing gear and you remove its wings and you put on a special set of wings and it enables the airplane to take off and land in a very, very short distance, which really makes it compatible uh, with many of the flat tops uh, that the French Navy has and many of the flat tops that exist around the world today. And as we've been talking about this, not only with um, uh, the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marine Corps, we've been talking about it with other countries around the world, and it gets people very excited that you can have this capability on a flat top and you take this capability with you and it doesn't need to take off or land or on land anymore. Now it would be shipboard compatible. Shebird is showcasing for the first time a sneak preview of its future S300 VTOL UAV. As you can see, it is uh, quite a bit larger compared to the in-service S100. The S300 is about 5 meters in length, has a payload capacity including fuel of 340 kilos and an endurance of up to 24 hours. The Thyssen Krupp Marine Systems both have several scale models on display and they are quite interesting, uh, starting with uh, the Miko A200EN, so this is for the Egyptian Navy. Uh, the shipyard in Germany has just delivered the first unit. Those frigates are quite heavily armed with, uh, if I remember right, uh, 24 vertical launch systems for uh, VL Mika surface to air missiles by MBDA, as well as VL Mika NG. Actually, the Egyptian Navy is the launch customer for these uh, new surface to air missiles. There are also uh, 16 anti ship missiles, Exocet MM40 Block 3. Again, so very interesting ships, quite heavily armed uh, with uh, many, many missiles. A new design. On display on the, on the booth here at Your Naval as well is the Miko A300 frigate, a large frigate. Again, many weapon systems on board. Uh, 127 mm main gun uh, with both uh, Mark 41 as well as uh, Mark 56 uh, vertical launch systems. Two ram launchers and uh, what looks like uh, 16 uh, naval strike missile anti ship missiles. I was told the Miko A300 is 129 meters in length for displacements of 6,000 tons. This model features a number of next generation weapons, such as directed energy weapons, a laser weapon system on top of the bridge, and high power microwave uh, amidship. On top of the helicopter hangar, there's a container. This is for counter UAV. This is the Coyote system by uh, Raytheon. And on each side of the hangar door, you can see two uh, Nexter rapid-fire uh, closing weapon systems. There's a modular mission bay uh, at the stern under the helicopter hangar. Uh, TKMS was uh, proposing this design to uh, the Polish Navy. Uh, however, Poland uh, selected uh, an offer from the UK with the Red uh, 140. Behind it, is the Miko A100 uh, light frigate. This design has been selected and entered production in Brazil for the Brazilian Navy as part of the Tamandare class program. Uh, it shares uh, as well a similar uh, multi-mission uh, bay under the helicopter deck with uh, containerized uh, mission modules. The German shipbuilder is also showcasing the Type 212 CD, so they are next generation submarine. The program is uh, ongoing for both uh, the German Navy and uh, the Norwegian Navy and the German shipbuilder is uh, pitching it uh, currently uh, to the Netherlands for the world class uh, submarine replacement program. TKMS is showcasing for the first time uh, two modules for uh, submarine uh, energy. The first one is what they call the advanced uh, submarine fuel cell system and next to it 
is a model of their uh, lithium-ion battery uh, in which they, they, they work on that technology in partnership with, uh, with SAFT. Uh, they believe that uh, both technologies of fuel cell and lithium-ion batteries are uh, the right solution currently at the moment and actually both technologies uh, will be fitted on board the Type 212 CD as well as the Type 212 CDE uh, that they are proposing to the, to the Netherlands. We are now on the booth of French company Alcimar, uh, which is showcasing their iconic glider, the Sea Explorer, with a new payload. To find out more is Eric de Tretaigne. So uh, Eric, uh, first tell us, uh, how many uh, Sea Explorers uh, have you produced or delivered uh, nowadays? Uh, now we are delivering more than 100 uh, Sea Explorers. Most part of our client is in oceanography. Uh, Marine Institute and Research Center, but uh, with a new sensors is uh, interest a lot uh, Navy. So uh, tell us more about the, the, the new sensor. For, for which uh, type of uh, mission is it designed? New payload of this of the Sea Explorer is a uh, Aglims. It's a uh, acoustic recorder, passive acoustic recorder. Two kind of mission. Uh, first mission, you have a rapid environment assessment to calibrate like a CTD sensor, dissolve oxygen, microturbulence. But uh, the second kind of operation is in rock uh, for acoustic. Now we can talk about a successful mission with this kind of uh, uh, acoustic payload for mammal assessment. Uh, and you can imagine the follow of this kind of mission. Uh, I guess we can indeed, because uh, at the back of your booth, you have a poster showing uh Sea explorers uh, next to a, a submarines, so uh, probably the, it's related. Uh, the sea explorer with a payload could uh, conduct a potentially uh, anti-submarine warfare missions in in, in the future. Uh, what else uh, is new with uh, the sea explorer? We just successfully uh, had a mission for Repmus. We participate at uh, NATO exercise Repmus and uh, Dynamic Messenger. Uh, two weeks ago in Portugal and uh, the Sea Explorer uh, was a really successful vehicle uh, for reliability and performance. And uh, just so that our audience know, can you remind us uh, the endurance of uh, this type of uh, systems? It's a glider, so slow, but long endurance, more than 110 days and uh, 1,200 kilometers.